Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last episode, we learned about how to calculate total room areas. Today in this episode, we are going to talk about how to calculate total gross building areas for your project. Let's begin. I'm using a sample residential design project. Let's go into the ground floor area. I would like to find out the total gross building area of this floor. How do I do this? Let's go to the architecture tab under room and area. I have something called area. Under this area tool, there is a tool called area plan. So the first step of creating a gross building area is to create an area plan for it. So let's go ahead and create an area plan for our ground floor. Make sure that the type of area that you want to select is selected as gross building. The difference between a gross building and a rentable is that the gross building is going to take the boundary of your area as the exterior side of the exterior walls whereas the rentable is going to take the interior side of your exterior walls. We're going to come back to both of these differences in a while. So let's go ahead and select gross building area for ground level and I say okay. Now here Revit is asking if it can automatically create area boundary lines associated with external walls for your gross building area. Let's go ahead and say yes to that. If your design is simple, most of the time Revit is going to automatically be able to generate the area boundary lines correctly. If it doesn't, you can also create manually and we're going to come back to that also. For now, I see that my gross building area boundary lines are pretty much correct and it has already automatically added this area cross. And when you select this area, you will see that total area is already computed. Let's put in a tag here. Let's go to the architecture and under tag area, I'm going to put a tag. Here, no area tag family is loaded in the project. So let's load one now. I'm going to choose the default area tag that is available in my default library and I'm going to open that up. And here I'm going to put it up. So once you have your area tag put in, you can visibly see that this area is 132.95 square meters. So what it here automatically did is to already create area boundary line around exterior side of your exterior walls and already put in a large area that encloses this purple boundary line. Same with here, I have a little small quarter over here on the side and it has also calculated the area for the same. I'm also going to tag that area and put in a tag. Now let's try that with a rentable area. Let's go to the area, create an area plan with a rentable type of building area. Do it for the same ground floor and I'm going to open that up and say yes to the automatically create area boundary lines with all external walls. It's taking inner side of your external walls. So here, um, let's see if it has put an area. I don't think so. So let's go ahead and put in an area. Now, because we already have a tag loaded in the project, we can switch on this tag on placement. So whenever we put an area, the area tag also comes along. And let's put this area. So if you see here, the gross building is 132.95 square meters, where rentable area is 121.07 square meters. So that's really the difference between the two types. This takes the exterior side of the external walls, and this takes the inner side of the external walls. Now let's go ahead and see how we can manually add boundary lines in a project. Let's go to the area and create an area plan for the first floor for gross building area. And this time I'm going to say no to automatically create area boundary lines because I want to create my boundary lines manually uh, by selecting my walls. And I'm going to say no here. So now you see there are no purple lines available to you. Instead, I will go under area boundary, choose pick lines option. Now, If you have apply area rules switched on, it would mean that if you go near a wall, it's going to take the center line of your walls. Now, because I am looking for a gross building area, I don't want the center lines. So I will switch that off and choose the exterior side of my external walls manually by selecting the walls that I need in my floor. So I'm going to choose the external sides over here and here. Now, if you're doing this manually, make sure that there are no open loops, no overlaps, and no intersections. If you're trying to trim it directly like this, you might have an issue of trimming the walls or trimming any other model elements that you've done. So what I like to do is I select one of the lines 
and isolate that category so I only see the purple lines. In this way, I avoid trimming unnecessary elements. So I'm going to go ahead and modify and trim it and trim this part as well. So I need to ensure that I have a nice enclosed loop here. And then I can go ahead in my architecture tab and an area, I can put in an area over here. So this is also another way you can manually create your area boundary lines and add an area. Now let's say in this particular first floor plan, I have a few terraces, which I want to calculate area separately. For this, I can keep on adding more boundary lines. You can either pick your walls or you can also draw your boundary lines. I'm going to pick this wall and again, select one of my lines, isolate the category and then trim everything up. I'm going to use a T-junction over here. And once I have a nice enclosed loop, I'm going to go ahead on the architecture area and add an area line. Yeah. You can also rename your area here. I can say this is terrace. And this is my first floor area. Now let's say if you want to deduct a specific space from the calculation of your area. For example, in this case, total first floor area that is visible here is 104 square meters, including the staircase area. Now I want to deduct the staircase area from the calculation and, and calculate this area separately. How can I do this? Let's go to the architecture tab, choose area boundary. I'm going to create an enclosed space inside an enclosed space. So here you see that this external boundary for my first floor area is an enclosed space. And inside this, I'm going to create another enclosed loop here, which is how it's going to deduct the space from here. So you can see here from instead of 104 square meter, now it's calculating 93.88 square meters. If I want to calculate the staircase area separately, I can add one more area here. And there you go. So I can select here and rename that as stairs. Now all these area plans that we have created so far has now sitting in the project browser in a separate category. So here you can see an area plan gross building, ground floor, first floor, and they're under rentable, you have a ground floor plan. So if you are creating area plans, you will find them under your project browser here. Now, how do we find out the total gross building area of our project so far? So let's go ahead and create a schedule of area. Let's go to view schedules, schedule quantities, select the category of areas gross building and say, okay, now let's take the available fields from here and transfer them to the schedule fields, which we want. Let's take the level name and probably area. This is what is interesting for us right now. We can also go to sorting and grouping and sort everything by level. We can add a header and footer under the level. And then let's go ahead and uh, go make level field hidden so that we don't see the level field in every single row and make sure that area is also calculating total. So we want to find out the total of your area. I'm going to say, okay. So now the level field is hidden, but it's available in the header. So everything is grouped by level and ground floor level has total gross building area is 147.57 square meters. Same thing with first floor, it's 129.78 square meters. And the total gross building area of this project that we have calculated so far is 277.36. So if you now add more area plans for the second floor and third floor, this schedule is going to get updated automatically. In the next episode, we are going to talk about colorful schemes, how we can add colors and patterns to our room plans and area plans and make them more presentable. So please make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.